Hi everyone and welcome to week two of Facebook marketing. It's lovely to meet all of you. I really love the way that everyone has contributed great uh, introductions to the our Blackboard class and we're hearing about all of the various places you're working. Some of you are in nonprofits, some of you are doing your own thing, some of you are big orgs, a bunch of you are doing some client client stuff on the client stuff on this. Traditionally the breakdown of the classes I teach and it's exciting to hear that um, everybody's got some really fun projects to work on and I cannot wait to see your Facebook pages. So if I'm going to see your Facebook pages, I guess we should learn how to build them. Uh, this week, the goals are simple. If I can click over. The goals are simple. Uh, we're going to build the brand page. Uh, so we're going to make sure you, you have one goal, and that is to make sure that your settings uh, and all of your, your setup for the foundation of your presence on Facebook, which is a brand page, um, is ready to go. And that from there, we can figure out how to drive off site to get some really great conversions. Uh, and just in general, think about what does eventually what does measurement look like? What do ads look like? Uh, and what does an Instagram integration look like? But for now, uh, we can't do any of that if we don't have a solid understanding of where to start as brand. Uh, so as part of starting as a brand, you kind of, you know, it's the whole idea is do we start from top down or bottom up uh, and my approach is very often with the with marketing campaigns is bottom up which is uh, who is the audience we're marketing to so we don't start with the brand and then go find the audience because that can be incredibly difficult to do instead we start with the audience and then see how we can we can market our product in a way that meets that audience's needs um, given that we have whatever our initiative is, whether it's a campaign, an event, uh, a storefront, a Shopify store, an online store, or traditional brick and mortar store. Uh, so what you really want to do is think about who is this audience? And if I take myself and my ego out of this audience for a few minutes and I think, what is it that my audience really wants to see? And one thing I always encourage new students to social media marketing, and even those of you, I know there's a few of you who are, this is your last course in completing the certificate. When you get on Facebook, think about all of the things you have to do today. So on average, the <clears throat> Canadians, Canadians in particular, check Facebook 14 times a day. 14 times a day. That means we're popping in, we're checking our feed, and we're popping out. So as a brand, how can you have any impact in that? Uh, so... Let's look at what other people are doing. Uh, I'll post this week to look at the Food 52 page. Uh, and when we look at how low organic reach is, and organic reach means the reach that you've gained without ads, uh, earned media versus paid media. Why is it that engagement is so low, but the the number of fans is so large? Um, you know, we're, we're going to eventually very soon have a zero percent organic reach on Facebook everything's going to need to be paid so if we look at that really we need to know who our audience is so that we can build targeted campaigns that reach them and help with conversions so let's start by looking at a page that has a huge brand presence online food 52 and say what's up with their audience who is their audience who are they approaching and what are some of the ways that engagement could do that better there are some other ways that there are some presence in Facebook and, and again, it becomes really helpful to start to take a bottom up approach in who our audience is. And that is looking at activism or nonprofit campaigns and this whole Mac Malcolm Gladwell phrase around slacktivism, which might have been talked about in other classes. You might have re read some articles about this great New Yorker piece from a few years ago around slacktivism. Slacktivism is this whole idea that on Facebook and in social campaigns, we can get behind a cause, we like a page, we might share it, we might uh, comment, that actually doesn't help the cause in any real capacity. It's not a call to action where you give your dollars or go out and volunteer and make a difference. You simply have liked the page. And this could not be more true today, even in a business sense, outside of activism. We need to move away from those vanity metrics. We need to move away from the idea of just getting page likes on Facebook and start to design the page to think about who is the audience, what are the messages that this audience really wants to see, and how can I encourage our call to actions to meet our business goals? When you look at I would really encourage you to look at big and small campaigns and the nonprofit sector to think about even when you're not selling a product, 
you still have a call to action. And those call to actions are all over Facebook. You can see them in these two examples here. Who are you yard sailing for from Breast Cancer, uh, Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation, or even Greenpeace doing a call to action saying get a hold of Obama and you know address some of the needs around Arctic drilling. Uh, ultimately, all of these call to actions are getting the users, encouraging the users to click out of Facebook over to the site and give their dollars, which is the same as saying in the corporate world, get out of Facebook, get to the website and make a sale. Language is specific on effective call to actions and as a CTA is, CTA is call to action, it's action driven. So we're not posting to Facebook to share the top 10 Buzzfeed clever friends episodes of all time, even though that might generate you a ton of likes. Instead, we need to talk about how can we really think about our business goals, think about our audience, and then drive a call to action that justifies our time on Facebook. I heard a great quote recently that said, your number one goal as a social media marketer is to return your employers in, or your clients' in investment in you as quickly as possible. So if you're getting paid, let's say, uh, $10,000 to do a social media marketing contract, that would be lovely uh, for a couple months. You need to return that ten thousand and ideally double it at twenty thousand dollars in revenue as quickly as possible. Sometimes when we see online campaigns, we can't assume that there this whole slacktivism is ineffective. Uh, in the case of SOPA, which was a few years ago now, it was a whole community that came out against uh, about the censorship online and in the Congress bill that was presenting to sort of have a, have a less open internet where certain elements, certain websites had presence based on traffic, but it opened up the possibility that if websites paid more to their ISPs, they could be featured more prominently or more quickly than other sites that didn't have the money, which then creates a freedom of speech and freedom of the press and freedom of access conversation. So people were so upset about SOPA and the idea of free internet that that there were these amazing activism campaigns that generated tons of likes and tons of action very quickly. And that action, all of those likes, all of that attention online actually resulted in the SOPA bill coming down and, and not succeeding in, in Congress in the US. So we've seen case study after case study, Ice Bucket Challenge to an extent is a great example of that where we're seeing Facebook campaigns that actually do move beyond the slacktivism ideal and move into real return on the investment of the social media marketer. So these poor social media marketers, all of you, myself included in this group, oh, we build all of these pages, we do all of this work, and then these community pages are still floating around. They're not as prominent anymore, they're harder to find, but they still exist. And this is the idea of a page that's populated from open content on the web say a Wikipedia page. So what you're looking at on the screen is a screenshot from Habitat for Humanity International on their community page, which is a page that gets returned to users who search Habitat for Humanity through Graph or through fa the Facebook search. Uh, but the community page isn't managed by anybody. It can't be edited, can't be changed. Uh, it's not a brand page. Nobody owns it. It's just public content that's pulling, being pulled out from the web uh, and placed in Facebook to keep users within the Facebook ecosystem. And these are a pain in the behind for community managers. And I would say as you're thinking about building a brand page, especially if you're establishing a new brand presence that didn't exist before, you need to spend your time in graph doing as many searches as you can for that brand name in all different combinations to see what is the existing presence for this brand on Facebook and what happens when a user actually goes all the way out to search for a brand, which is so rare, right? Normally we find out now about brands through the news feed, somebody shares something, we click, oh, we see the page, oh, maybe I'll like that so I get more updates from them in the future. Uh, it's rare that we're going to search out a brand page. So if you actually get somebody who's gone so far, they're basically a qualified lead. They've gone, taken the step to search you. And then they hit this community page or some other content, a group maybe, somebody set up a long time ago, nobody's maintaining in your organization. Instead of the brand page that I'm going to show you how to build so effectively, I can't stress enough that it's important to know your audience and know what they see uh, before you start to build. Uh, 
so again, here's a great example of that. What you're looking at on the screen is a screenshot of Roots, uh, Roots brand page on the left and Roots community page on the right. Uh, the community page, as I said, is just content that's being pulled from Wikipedia. And it says right there, the source is Wikipedia, and you can see that it's clearly different from a brand page. Uh, what's so annoying is you can see this like, create a page in the top right corner of the image on the right side. Like there's still a call to action from Facebook to build your own page as if this community, they know the community page is less effective. Uh, this is all just an element of build, know what your audience is, know what the presence is on Facebook and do a good job from the beginning. Graph. So I've said graph a few times in these slides and you might have jotted down on notes. What is graph and what is she talking about? Graph is Facebook's internal search, but it's not just a search. It's an entire app, in-app, within the Facebook ecosystem that's so clever and smart. Graph results actually return uh, responses outside of just your friends. So you can get results from your non-friends, for instance, and you can search contextually. So on the left, you'll see if I search photos taken in Italy of my friends, I can see all of the photos of my friends who had a picture and it was tagged G, they're geolocated, or they put something in their comments about the picture being taken in Italy. The same thing, what if I'm curious, who's been to New York of my friends? I could search return my friends who have been to New York and then see a list of my friends and reach out to them and say, you know, give me some advice on the best places to eat in New York. What's interesting is you could just search people who've been to New York or people who love Greek restaurants in Toronto. And then on the right, you can see actually start to refine your search terms by gender. Show me women who like Greek restaurants in Toronto. Now suddenly I have an open, uh, open search results, a database of people who I know are interested in the brand I'm thinking about building. How big is the audience? How many women in Toronto like Greek food? Is it worth it to start to build a page with that search term? How many people have listed on their page that they like it? Graph is really, really interesting to do some generalized audience research and scoping around your competitors, around you, around your brand, around your initiative, around your project to start to get some ideas. Now, I wouldn't say that as a brand you should openly message, although you might have the ability, you might see here in the search results, to message strangers. I would never advise that. Don't message the strangers. Privacy is so important to Facebook and it's absolutely true here too. Uh, but you can collect some very interesting user data here to help to educate yourself on who your audience might be and what their interests might lead to. Plus, it's a cool way to find out some more information about your friends. So as I mentioned, there's a really powerful marketing potential behind Graph. Uh, in the case of nonprofits, there is the potential to message people who have indicated that they are passionate about the topic or the cause that you are promoting. So I know I have a friend who uh, was using Graph effectively. She built a marketing campaign out and then she said, you know, I'm supporting women's shelters and this nonprofit over a women's shelter. I'm, I need to know who else have, has expressed support and concern for women's shelters in the city. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use Graph to find it. And then she finds some people who have, who have openly and publicly stated that they have an interest in supporting uh, women and supporting women's shelters and supporting um uh, action against the abuse of women and, and helping to support those causes. So uh, when she found those people, she then sent a general, basically like an unsolicited email, uh, but within Facebook, to let them know that, that there's a cause and, a, and an event happening that they've indicated they might be interested in, and, and if they want more information, they should message her. She turned more qualified leads and sold more tickets with that personalized approach than any... Facebook post going out to the world could achieve, um, given the small, small scope, no ad budget, no way to really boost the post, organic re reaches low. She took a very personalized one-on-one -on -one approach that in her specific instance actually worked pretty well. All right, so we're going to look at some more case studies, but let's look at the page in particular and stop talking about the things around the page. <laughs> so the page itself what we're looking at here is Tim Horton's page. I pulled it today. So we can see the page these days, as I talked about in my last lecture, looks 
almost identical to the profile page. So we're seeing brands having, again, returning back to a presence very similar to users. Whereas in a history, as we learned last, uh, last class, uh, brand pages and personal profiles were separated and they, they had a completely different look and feel so that users felt like we have our community and then we have brands community. But as we move forward in, in Facebook's development and their software releases, we're seeing the brand page becoming more and more like a profile. The cover photo is important, but it's important for the first time you hit the page, right? The reason is because we know we're not going back to the page to get content once we've already liked it because we're going to get those updates in our newsfeed and that as we're checking Facebook 14 times a day, we're, we're unlikely to go back to that page, which means your image on your cover photo really needs to reach out to those people who have not yet liked your page, but you want to encourage to like your page. So really think about that as you're designing that cover photo. What is a potential inviting call to action, an invitation, a way to tell my users about the brand page and invite them to click like and stay connected, knowing there's probably only one, one or two times they're ever gonna see this content. It also means you can change it pretty regularly because you're getting different people coming in all the time and you don't have to worry. Uh, so I showed you Tim Hortons, big, 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 big budgets, 2.4 million people liking it, posts, yeah, big, we get it, big, 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 but I don't want you to be discouraged. I love Pathways to Education. I, I have a background working with nonprofits and Pathways in particular is just amazing. Um, and here's an example of a small page uh, from Pathways to Education in Regent Park where they have just roughly 500 likes on this page, um, but they're doing such a great job. Check out the call to action button right over the cover photo to contact us. So I hit the page for the first time and I immediately can get in touch with them to, to contact them if I want to. I love that call to action button. It's even before the like. It's like, get in touch with us. I want to convert you as a lead. I want your email address. I want to know who you are so that I can send you more emails on an ongoing basis even before you like the page. Because even when they like the page, Facebook's only showing your updates to a small, small number of the people who have liked your page even. The reach within it is so small, especially in organic reach. We're going to be at 0%, meaning 0% of the people who go to the effort of liking your page will see the content, i.e. nobody seeing your content if you don't pay for it. So I love the call to action to get them out of Facebook and contact us. Back to Facebook in particular, I love the call to action here as an event. So I love, and then when I hovered over the image, I got more content. So you can see this little gray box. When I hovered over the cover photo, I got all of the information that was within the image tag. This is accessible. This is image full. It's current and up to date. And if you just quickly look at the page at a glance, you can see this barbecue branding throughout the page. We see the the sort of mason jar barbecue look right at the top. We then see it repeated in the photos that have been posted to promote the event throughout their wall as a post. This is great, great, great engagement at a small nonprofit with probably limited social media budgets. You can do it too. My, my lessons in class is always you can do it too. You really can. Big, big, big budgets, simple, simple, simple marketing. So even in the case here of the NFL page, probably much more than 5 million likes now. Look at how simple their about statement is. Do not throw your whole mission of the org into that about statement. If we go back to the new pages here, the about statement at, uh, at for Regent Park is just a website, right? We have so little text here, so few characters. Keep it simple. I love kickoff can't come fast enough. It's like It's a quick little marketing branding tagline. You don't need to say anything else. Sure, if you're NFL, you might want to say, hey, we reached the right page. This is an official page. That's it. Keep it simple. Keep it clean. Keep it short. Keep your conversions high. All right, build your page. So the task for this week really is to get out of this lecture, get off of YouTube, and get into Facebook. So your tasks are to build out the page or check your settings if you're working on an existing page. So things I want you to check off your list this week, what does your cover look like, cover photo look like? Do you have a call to action? Are you addressing 
new likes, new and existing, new people who are coming to your page because they're the ones who are going to see it for the first time? And is there a call to action in that cover photo? Uh, what is the name of the page and what's the URL? So if we go back for a minute, you know, if we're hitting Pathways to Education Regent Park or NFL, you want to make sure that URL is facebook.com slash NFL, right? So if you've got some user ID, blah, 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 or it's just a long uh, nonsensical URL for Facebook, you need to make sure you change that so that uh, your Facebook page is uh, easily promoted through other social networking sites. Uh, I want to see some really great photos because we can see if we look back at that region park above the fold, those photos that get posted to the wall as an update resonate right on the sort of most recent photos. This is a marketing and branding opportunity for you to create some cohesion and an overall brand look when they hit the page. Remember, people see this when they're hitting the page for the first time. And then think about other brand likes. We're going to cover that in a few minutes. Uh, if you're not sure if you're building for the first time, you can keep this page unpublished or in development until you're ready to go live. I would definitely recommend you keep the page unpublished until you've got all of this locked in. If that means you don't publish this page until week six of this course, that's completely fine. It's better for you to be uh, building a great page, doing a great job getting all the pieces right, then putting something up and people starting to find you before you're really ready. The big task for you to answer, and I'm going to call out all of us to share this on the Blackboard discussion and comment and critique each other on the page, which is as you're starting to establish the page you want to build or maintain over the next seven weeks, who is your audience? I'm not interested in the type of content you're going to post to the page. That will come later. What I am interested in this week is how are you building? What does it look like? Who is your audience? And what does that voice of, the, of, of your content, what does that speak to? Who do people hear from? Who are you really marketing to? And what do you anticipate that those people want to hear from you? And maybe use graph search to get some insight on that if you don't yet have the answers. All right, so I want you to build a brand page and I want you to do it in a somewhat new way. So everybody, whether you're, brand, you're starting a brand new page or you're establishing and helping with an existing page, you need to start at Business Center. So we are getting out of Facebook.com and we are going to business.facebook.com. So let's just take this lecture for a minute and I'm going to jump into Facebook dot com so that you can see it. So uh, right here, bear with my little screen, but I'm going to just show you here. Uh, so I've gone to business dot Facebook, Facebook, typing in real time, dot com. And I'm just going to sign out of this for a minute so that you can see what it looks like when you start. So this is where we're starting Facebook dot Facebook for business and this is the business manager account so you can log in you can log in with your existing Facebook ID or if you want to keep your personal Facebook page completely separate from your brand presence you can sign up for business manager with any account you can use your work ID you could use your agency ID you can use your George Brown email you can use anything you want uh, and that's really to to your benefit in that you can establish your brand presence and keep your personal life separate. So if you scroll down to the bottom of this business manager awesome console and you hit get started, you're going to be prompted to log in. So this is either we are creating an account or you log in. So in my case, I'm going to log in with my Facebook ID just so that you can see how this process works. If you don't have one password, you totally should get it. That's my prompt for one password. All right, so this is the getting started page. So when we're looking at getting started, this is a simple four step process. Business manager, click next. From that, you have to answer just three super short, super easy questions. Are you an agency? Are you an advertiser? Or are you an app developer? So if you're an agency, you know you're an agency or even an agency might be a consultant. So if you're a freelancer and you're building pages for other companies, uh, you might list yourself as an agency. If you're working in-house or you're the only person who's ever going to have access to managing the back end of the Facebook page, so you are the one who owns it and ownership is really key here, and you're an advertiser. So in my case, I'm going to say advertiser and I'm going to say I'm in education. 
which I am. Uh, since it's just me and I'm working freelance, it's one to 10 people. Uh, and oh, I could build upwards to 100 pages. So we'll say one to 100 pages. Let me click next. Now I need to establish the pages. So right away, if you don't have a page, you can create one right in the simple, simple, there were only steps three of four. So let's say uh, Amanda's education business is the name of my, this is the console for the business, not the name of the brand page. I could take ownership of any existing pages that I have if I want to. So if you already are an owner of a page, this is where you can start from Business Center. Otherwise, you can start by creating a new page directly within Business Center. And then from here, we'll go on to the next step. So in my case, I'm going to just take ownership of something random just for fun. And if you have a Facebook sales rep that you're already working with, I have one. If you need the name, I can give it to you. His name is Vino. Uh, and I can give you that contact if you want it. Go from there. Next. Next, you just need to set up your business account profile. So this is your name. In my case, it's Amanda Monday. Monday and my email, this is where it can be separate from your personal Facebook ID. So I could set up my personal or my business email. This is not my Facebook personal email. We're good to go. Nothing from your personal Facebook profile will show in business manager. Completely separate identity. Hit create. Now we're in. So guides if you need it. Right away, as soon as we're in, because I took ownership of an existing page, I'm getting metrics and stats before I do anything else. We're going to be spending a lot of time in business for the business manager for Facebook when we get into ads. We have two weeks of ads coming up because ads are so important. But for now, I just want you to create a Facebook business profile so that you can create and manage the page itself. Don't worry about the ads components yet. So I'm going to log out of this one I just created for you randomly and I'm going to log into my actual business ID which hopefully I remember the password. What's more awkward than logging in in real time for a password? Oh no. Nope. Do it after. All right we'll come back. What's my password? So awkward. We'll come back. All right. Once we've created a Business Center account, do you like my transition? You get into the at the page settings. So if you're establishing a page or you're updating an existing page, either way, make sure you select settings, go through and look through all of the, the settings of your page, including the visibility. So whether you're gonna knock this page out to unpublished while you're building, it's important. Uh, you need to look at things like notifications. Can people who don't like the page message you? What are the call to action, like Regent Park, that contact us button? Is there a call to action? What type of page have you created? So you know how I define the page as education. Is it important that you establish this page uh, as a, a storefront that has hours, as a service, as a restaurant, a freelance, as an identity, music, etc. There's lots of different options. Make sure you get that categorization right because there's different above the fold content that's presented to users based on the categorization you select. If you are a store or a business that has operating hours, you need to make sure that that's clearly available. When we're looking at the cover photo as one of the tasks for this week to build, there actually are some guidelines you need to make sure you follow in terms of the size. You also um, need to make sure that uh, you're not putting any ads themselves in the cover photo. So you can have unique photo, you can have unique album artwork, you can be creative, but just make sure that you, uh, you're not specifically building an ad. Uh, and that's part of Facebook's guidelines. Uh, but you can promote. So things like you should like us, a call to action, come to the barbecue, to actions are fine that's all good uh, for your j uh, for the actual image size you want to keep it to under 100k in size and the pixels are 851 pixels wide by 315 pixels tall uh, and this information will be accessible to you outside of this video 
I also love these this uh, infographic from HubSpot that actually shows you all of the different templates that you need to design, including uh, what your content looks like on the in the news stream page and the cover photo pixels. So use this as a template to build. When you're building the page, it's helpful even if the page is unpublished to start to populate the page with some content before it even goes live or if you're updating a page. Uh, some of the great features that brand pages can do that users can't do at the profile level is you can pin your content to the top, meaning it floats above all of the other content, even more recent posts. I like this for a call to action. I like pinning to top if you have a campaign that you're running. I also like that you can, um, you can promote posts with a pinned post and you can manage dates. So now, thankfully, it's so awesome on Facebook, you can publish scheduled posts, which means you can spend all of your time on the weekend getting all of your content ready to go and then have it go out across the week at the times that make sense based on your peak Facebook use hours, uh, which you can see in Insights, and have that content go out as it makes sense. You don't need to post when you are on Facebook and it's convenient for you. You need to post when your users are online and they'll best make use of that content. I mentioned other page likes. I really like using Facebook as the brand, which you'll do when you establish Facebook's business manager. Go in to Facebook's business manager and then once you're operating the page as the brand, go to other business pages and like the brand page. So that's kind of confusing as I said it that way. So give me one second to log into Facebook here. And I'll show you what I mean. All right, so here's business manager. So I'm gonna jump in to this page here. This is my business page that I'm running. Now I'm using Facebook as the business, separate from my Facebook account or ID. If I head over to facebook.com and let's go to lean, let me go to lean in. So let's say I'm looking at lean in. Maybe I want to like this page as a brand. So if I'm surfing through Facebook, I can use Facebook as community print club. Now that I'm using Facebook as Community Print Club, did everybody see how I did that? I just clicked in the top right corner, use Facebook as a brand, not as my personal self. Go over to say Lean In. Now if I like this page, I'm liking it as Community Print Club, not as Amanda Monday. And why that's so great is then the community manager who's running Lean In will get a notification that Community Print Club liked the page. Also, these these likes appear above the fold on brand pages, kind of like partners. So it's really a great way to get the attention of your partners, your sponsors, your, uh, your different colleagues, not your competitors, uh, but if people you want to see your page when you're ready to go live. It's excellent for business to business interactions. Business to consumer, it's a little bit different, but for B2B, this is an excellent way to build partnerships within the Facebook ecosystem. I love it. All right, so your homework, and you have a homework that will be graded this week, your online activity for the week. Remember, we have these tasks every week, and this is making up the bulk of your work in this course. Uh, I need to see the build get started. So set up your business.facebook account, I want to see the cover photo and the and I want to see your expert social media marketer reasoning for every element of the page. What's the cover photo? What is the username? What's your strategy for other brand likes? How do you intend to use the photo gallery? What does the about statement look like? If you're not yet live and you're building in development, you can still plan and build out these strategic components, and but make sure to tell us when you intend to go live. And the most important piece to report to our whole class this week is who is your page being developed for, who is your audience, and what is the voice and the way you are going to talk to that audience. If you're not sure, ask your colleagues.
ask for help in this class, present your page or present your idea for the page, and let's talk about who we think the audience might be. We can use graph to look at for who that audience is, and we can just simply test it based on our overall super awesome use of Facebook since we're all avid social media marketers and we love to be in these tools. We can use our knowledge to help each other build a correct audience definition. And this is really important as you're building your final strategy papers later in the course on week seven. You need to do a two-page strategy. Uh, and that this should be client facing. I, I want you to leave this course feeling like you have a template to build a Facebook strategy for a real client, a paid gig. Um, I should also mention just as a side note that I've hired students in the past regularly through my own business, Benny Lavoro uh, and subcontracted the great ones. So those who build great strategies, um, even I employ you and I find, <laughs> I find lots of people who, who are constantly looking for, for expertise in social media marketing and Facebook expertise in particular. So, uh, getting started with this right foundation is, uh, is very useful for your actual career development. This isn't just talk. Uh, I'm so excited to see you. Uh, check over, see your work, and uh, check over the lecture light if you want to see me stress the audience in visual uh, facial form, if you will, my connection to you this week. Uh, and otherwise, share your work on Blackboard. Take care all, have a good week.